giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Uh, we ask each of our hosts to come up uh, with uh, eight locks and three uh, dark horses for them to go through. Uh, and we're going to essentially, we, we compared these lists, took a look at uh, which ones overlap from each other. And we're going to cover the teams that were specifically overlapped for the locks. The dark horses will be a little bit different, but we'll cover the teams that were overlapped for the lock in a little bit more detail. Uh, we're also going to be showing some data too, in regards to the fancy first draft that we had last night. If you didn't get a chance to see it, by the way, uh, we had 10 teams, uh, each got $200 to spend to draft teams in there. So there was prices set for these. You can go check this out yourself as well, too, if you're interested in creating your own team at tinyurl.com forward slash fun IRI 2019 to set your own draft. Uh, so, of course, 68 teams going through here. Uh, we had some fantastic teams. Some I think are really going to stand out. Maybe we some some that we missed, but we'll definitely try to catch as many as we can. Uh, so, Tegan, why don't you start us out here with uh, – Really the most expensive team is paid for in the fantasy draft as well, too, and I don't think a big surprise, Team 2056. All right, so Team OP Robotics uh, from t uh, Stony Creek, Ontario, Canada, unsurprisingly was the most expensive team in our IRI draft last night, going for $76 plus the Canadian exchange conversion rate. Uh, there's an argument to be made. <laughs> I don't know how much that makes them. I think that actually makes them a dollar. So that's, or I guess a hundred dollars. That's pretty, pretty <laughs> impressive for them. Uh, there's an argument to be made with them being the best team in the world, rivaled with 1323 personally is what I would say. There's really nothing this robot can't do. In their first match of the year, actually, I remember watching and they just completed a robot, like a, a rocket by themselves. So, you know, that's the precedent that you set for the entire year. They haven't stopped moving forward from that. Uh, so I pulled together some stats, and my stats have them in the top 10% of the highest hatch to cargo ratio for this event, particularly to the two hatch auto at the beginning of the match. Um, I've also seen them with an average of 13 pieces per match over the entire season, and a level three that goes up really in the blink of an eye. So they're not, you know, if you're if you're deciding who you're going to be against in eliminations, they're not that team. Not making Einstein was probably one of the biggest upsets of the year, so they'll be looking to show that they're really OP at IRI. Uh, next up, I think we go to Ben. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm so I'm going to talk a little bit about 2910 Jack in the Bot, who's been really popular this year and really done a great job um, about with throughout their entire season. They're having a really strong robot, putting up really good stats, putting up a lot of game pieces. Uh, so they're out of Mill Creek, Washington. They were the fourth most expensive team in our draft, coming in at fifty-three dollars near the end of the draft. So 2910 won three district events this year, plus the PNW district championships for going out in the quarterfinals of their division. And when, you know, one could argue they were really, really close to ending up with uh, 1323, who really knows how that alliance selection would have gone. But uh, it's really, uh, they've really done a great job with having an insane cycle time. They've been probably the best low scoring robot in first this year. Uh, they have a, a really unique position at IRI, and then IRI has so many high-scoring robots, and 2910 has such short cycle times, they could potentially find themselves as a key piece, and maybe people might start looking at like the 2.5 robot strategy when you're able to get ahead quick and then go play defense and then beat out the other team, and 2910 could be a key piece in a strategy like that. And so they've got two hatch autos and a small footprint for facilitating double climbs, Expect them to be really picked early in the first round here. Now, uh, Tyler's gonna. Tyler's got something to say. Sure. I just want to point out uh, that it's it's interesting, by the way, that so these teams were the ones that overlapped on everybody's list. Yet these teams got knocked out relatively early at championships. Uh, so of course, semifinals for uh, 2056, uh, and the quarterfinals for 2910 as well too. So it'll be interesting to see if, if these teams, who I think are pretty hungry, uh, to do a bit more at IRI and see the damage there. Uh, the next ones I just want to jump in is that uh, the next teams that we're going to cover, which are the next three, these showed up on three of our four uh, host picks. Uh, so Christine's going to take it away with 195. Yep, so 195, uh, the Cyber Knights out of Southington, Connecticut, and they were the six most expensive team going for a whopping $47. So um, the Neutrons, my team saw a lot of 195 this season and how they evolved as it went on. Um, they showed up to Utica with a bag of parts, like Robot was not, you know, ready to go um, on day one. And by, you know, the end of the event, they had a quick level three climb and a blue banner in their back pocket with their ticket to champs punched. 
Um, their auto modes are absolutely ridiculous. It's one thing that's always been consistent about that team is their autonomous modes. And we've seen it year after year at IRI. Um, and this year, their turret really gives them the ability to score in any kind of configuration with a ton of pre-programmed controls. Um, so they may not have gotten to the finals at New England District Championship, but they definitely uh, kicked some ass later on and got the win on Curie. Basically, the IRI of North Champs, I would say. Um, all of these things make them an obvious lock this year at IRI. Uh, this is their seventh appearance at IRI, and they're defending champs with 2056, who they knocked out um, in the semis on Curie. And they've got 133 matches under their belt between official play and postseason events. So I think there's a lot for them to live up to. I know the last time that you know my team was at IRI and I was there, they took that event pretty seriously. They were not one of those teams who was just kind of kicking back and relaxing. Like they were focused and ready to show people what they were made of. So I'm excited to see how they do. Um, definitely one of my new favorite New England teams. So best of luck to them. And Justin, who do you have to talk about here? Well, I've got team 3707 from Brighton, Michigan. It's the Brighton Techno Dogs, our second, uh, 22nd. Uh, most expensive team. Uh, we're almost to that point where it's the least expensive team. Uh, at just $34, the Technodogs picked up four blue winner banners this year. Um, of course, one of those being the Detroit Championship. Back-to-back trips to, to Einstein for them, um, 2018 and this past year. So at IRI, though, last year, they were the second pick to the number three alliance. I do not think that it will last uh, nearly that long this year. Uh, there's steel in the draft, um, in the fantasy draft, um, in my opinion, is our you know the reason why we're talking about them now is because a lot of our hosts had had identified them as a a, a lock, but at the 22nd most expensive team, is surrounded on this list by all, all other teams that were in the top eight. Uh, you know, I think that they're a, they're a steal in the fantasy draft, and will there be a top eight team at IRI? That kind of remains to be seen, but uh, I expect good things out of 3707. And so last on our list of people who or teams who three out of the four of us picked to be on our list of locks is 1114. So I get all the Canada teams to talk about. Uh, Symbotics from St. Catharines, Ontario. They ring in our second most expensive team of last night's fantasy draft at $66. So they're another crazy powerhouse team, but we do know, I mean, you can talk all day about how great they are. You know, they've got that autonomous. They've got their climb is one of the, I think, probably one of my favorite climbs I've seen all year. But we do know, I think everyone noticed their weakness in Curia Limbs was adapting to defense, uh, especially with 1073 also attending. It's, you know, a little bit of deja vu, nightmare uh, nightmare quality uh, stuff for them. But they'll definitely know that that's where they have to adapt. That's where they have to learn. They were already a lock to begin with, and I think this is going to send them to new levels if they're going to be ready just, uh, you know, to bring it, to be a lock, and uh, to go show that they were worth 66 bucks. So our uh, last set here is going to be uh, ones that showed up on two of our host uh, picks, and we got three uh, of them as well, too. So Ben's going to kick it off with 3538. All right, so 3538, they're the Robo Jackets from Auburn Hills, Michigan. They were picked, uh, they were the uh, third highest team in the draft and drafted for $55. So they've really been on fire this year, and they've won three district events and two division championships, one at Michigan and one at Worlds. So they're extremely good at scoring at each of their events. They handle defense very well in the 12 to 13 uh, cycle range, kind of like hanging there with all the top teams. Uh, and obviously, you know, between them and 195, they were able to take down the 11-14-2056 alliance. Really expect them to get picked in the first round at IRI because they are just so freaking good at driving. Now I'm going to pass it to Christine. She's going to talk about 2767. Yep. So Team 2767 out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, it's Strike Force, and they came in at the 15th most expensive team from the draft last night at $37. So I was absolutely shocked when I like looked at their Blue Lions page this year, and I only saw one banner. Um, you know, they're an incredibly consistent team. I feel like they. You know, they ranked really high at all their events this year. They obviously play really great offense. They have quick climbs. Um, I feel like they're a really flexible alliance partner, so they're a definite lock in my opinion and obviously many others. Um, I can't remember. They, I don't think they were at IRI last year, right? Anybody? Uh, they, they, uh, were not, they were not at IRI last year. They were not. They were in 2017. Were. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, they seeded first in 2017. Yeah, so the last time they were there, um, I mean, they – did pretty amazing. Um, and I think they have a lot of, a lot to kind of prove after their, 
their champs run. They were partnered with 987. Um, I don't know. I feel like they're going to come in hot. I hopefully, like, I'd like to see them do really well personally. Um, Tyler, do you have anything else you want to add about Strike Force? I know you're yeah a uh, big fan of theirs. Oh, well, definitely. Um, yeah. So I mean, we talked about them a little bit last night uh, during the auction draft, and I, I honestly do think that uh, no disrespect to the other teams on carry, but I think if twenty seven sixty seven wouldn't have broken down in the finals. I think we would have seen a different Einstein appearance. Uh, 2767, I thought, looked absolutely fantastic. They had to uh, essentially revert the defense and uh, play Argos as one of their key offensive robots. And I think that obviously very much so hindered them. Argos is still a good robot, but that was meant to be their defensive bot. And when Strike Force had to make that switch and they knew they had to do that, uh, that kind of was the ending uh, sound for them. So uh, it could have been a different story that way. Uh, I know Corey and his team are, are hungry uh, to get back and prove a lot at IRI, uh, especially after not being there last year, and they won the world championships last year, well, last two years. Uh, so I'm looking for big things out of 2767. Uh, I love their robot. I think it's a very clean robot, and I think when it's fully functional and uh, not breaking down, I think uh, they are going to be one of the top-tier teams out there. I would agree with you. Um, Justin, why don't you – take it away with a very obvious team that should be on this list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from League City, Texas, is the Robonauts. So another team that kind of goes along with uh, 2767, in my opinion, a team that maybe has a little bit of uh, uh, something to prove at IRI this year. Um, just, uh, sorry, I lost where I was. Um, you know, even <laughs> at the start of the season, you know, 118 kind of got a lot of, maybe not criticism, but people had some comments about, wow, the robot doesn't look quite as complicated or doesn't look quite like a 118 robot. And then they went out during the, the regular season and got three blue banner wins, so it kind of answered them a little bit. But then their district championship uh, in Texas, there were semifinalists and semifinalists on, on their division in Houston. So um, we know that 118 obviously has a great robot. They do play well at IRI. They've, they've won it. Um, they won in 2016. I'm not sure if it's been recently since then, um, but they know how to win an IRI. Uh, I think they – did they skip last year? I feel like they weren't, they weren't there last year. No, they were, they were there last yeah, year. Yeah. They were a Lions four or five, one of those. Another uh, semifinal exit looks like for them last year at IRI. So, again, like Strike Force, I think they have a little bit of something to prove maybe, um, and I'm really interested to see how well, uh, how well they play. Yeah, a little birdie told me that they may have done something to switch up their wheels a little bit. So maybe that'll uh, maybe that'll change things. That might, that might help a little bit. I'm way more bullish if that's what they did. That that they'll go a lot further. I mean, I, I think without, I I don't see them getting far in the elims. But if they did switch up their drive, uh, well, that that bumps them up several spots in my book. That works for me because I just picked them in the off season fantasy draft happening on Discord. Like. Or on uh, Chief, maybe like 15 minutes ago. So that works for me. I'll take it. Let's go. <laughs> nice. Hashtag value, right? So <laughs> yep. um, some other teams yeah. that showed up in our in our host lists uh, that uh, were in one of the lists of the hosts, uh, 33 uh, showed up. Uh, they were $39 in the draft, uh, the 11th most expensive team, uh, $225, uh, $34, and uh, 20 uh, one th- or 21st most expensive team. Man, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, ben, anything from 225 you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, we're we're coming ready to play. We always take IRI very seriously. Um, so I, I think uh, we're, we're just looking to have a good time. It's it's IRI is unique in that it's both super competitive but super chill at the same time. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're always looking to have a good time, and this one, uh, this is no different. Yeah. A couple other ones, 2041 with $38 and our 12th most expensive team, 5406, uh, $38, 12th most expensive team in the draft, 5460 to, uh, for $46, 7th most expensive team in the draft. And, guys, uh, sad tier, uh, 330 going for $49, the 5th most expensive team in the draft. This will be their last event ever. Uh, so definitely looking for big things. Uh, I, Tegan, I know uh, we were talking pre-show a little bit about 330. Anything you want to just uh, mention about them at all? I mean, 330 is known, like, the people that have come out of 330, the robots over the years, like, this is a team, like, this is a legacy here, and 330, like, I'm following them, um, and I know for 4476, too, we talked about them at our kickoff, because it was like, okay, you know, when you fall down, just like they did in 2016 um, at uh, Champs, you know, you get back up, and that's almost something where their team, the way they've, you know, fought through all the, uh, you know, it's it's hard to be in first for, you know, I think it's 20 years or something like that. Like, they're a team that, no matter how they do at IRI, I think they're going out, everyone, like, there's no reason to not, like, 330. You know, like, the people on it are great, um, and I'm really sad. I wish I'd gotten to, you know, see them at Champs. Sad time. 
times, but um, like at IRI, I'm just looking for them to go out with class because that's basically all they, you know, all they know how to do is be classy, but be competitive at the same time. And it's really admirable uh, to watch. So good luck, 330. We're all rooting for you, I think. And if you want a little bit more in-depth look, if you can't get the IRI, we do have a Behind the Bumpers on them. So just search Behind the Bumpers 330, and you can check out more about their robot as well. And uh, them talking about their last season, too. Um, you can definitely see there's some sadness in their eyes uh, during the interview. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.